Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to start to thank Professor Akiwara, Professor Nara, and uh, Professor Zakuya for inviting me uh, to give this talk. And uh, also uh, thank Professor Tachi for uh, chairing this session. And uh, uh, I'm sorry that the title is a little bit long. It's about the folding of flat arrays with uniform thickness. Uh, basically, I want to take you through this journey uh, of uh, uh, my work on folding uh, thick panels. Uh, it, it's, it, it consists of some older stuff uh, and some new stuff. So it's a combination of uh, many things. I apologize if you have heard of some of the stuff before. So first of all, I'd like to thank my collaborators and uh, everyone contributes a bit to this uh, whole project. And so today I'll start by giving you a background why it is needed to do this work. Then I move on to some uh, technical aspect of this work. For instance, the folding arrays made of thick panels using origami concept, then arrays, uh, a compact folding uh, of arrays. So you can see the first and uh, sorry, the second and third, the difference is one is simply folded, the other is to make a compact folding. And then I move to a single degree of freedom compact folding of arrays with six panels. Then I finish with some final remarks. So the background is basically the loss of flat arrays in space, uh, in particular, uh, solar panels and uh, sometimes antennas as well. Uh, you can see here there are quite large solar panels in a, a space station. Uh, and not only you get the larger ones, they are also, uh, 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 sorry, uh, sometimes you have enormous ones. For instance, this is the one which is uh, designed for uh, uh, have, have a, a constant acceleration for a space probe, and therefore it needs uh, uh, power for it. Hence, this array is quite big to do the job. And in the past, uh, people have used like a parabolic antennas. So this has been the main focus of uh, uh, people working on deployable structures for quite some time. It's about how to fold a parabolic surface. However, more recently, it becomes possible to use flat panels, flat arrays to replace parabolic antennas. This is due to the advancement in electronics. So you can actually make an array in such a way it mimic a, a parabolic surface. Uh, so physically, it is a flat. However, it behaves as if it is a parabolic surface. Uh, due to this factor, uh, the life uh, for us becomes easier. So now instead of folding a parabolic shape, the important thing is that you need to fold a flat array. Therefore, the flat array is used both as solar panels, but also as antennas. So it becomes uh, uh, more common in uh, aerospace structures. And the, the current folding of this array is pretty uh, uh, simple. For instance, in this case, we have an array made of three panels. So basically, you just wrap it around a, 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 a satellite. In, in this case, the, the folding is pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, however, if this is, gets much bigger, uh, it becomes interesting how we can uh, fold it. And we have a better ways of folding it. So because we work on origami, and therefore we want to see whether it's possible to have bi-directional folding instead of single directional folding. So the single direction folding has already been used widely uh, for this kind of panels. For instance, this is a zigzag folding. It goes in only one direction. And uh, you can make it slightly more interesting by making the direction a curved. In that case, you just wrap it around. Again, it's a single direction of folding. And uh, people have worked on uh, bi-directional folding before. For instance, this is an animation uh, produced by people from uh, Braham Young University and uh, Larry House Group. So they produced 
this type of thing. And so it's a kind of bi-directional folding. Not only it folds in the radial direction, but also in the circumferential direction. However, this method is not uh, cannot be directly used for thick panels if you need the panels uh, uh, the array to be fairly uh, precise and accurate. And hence the the, the question uh, raises: uh, Can we fold? a flat array made from solid thick panels bidirectionally and compactly, uh, and then expanded to a flat profile uh, uh, precisely without any gaps. Okay, so this is the question I want to answer in, in this talk. So first of all, let's see how to fold arrays made from thick panels using origami concept. Uh, this is, uh, pretty old stuff. So we all know that all this work started from the Mura Ori because it looks, it's a beautiful concept to fold the arrays made of uniform uh, pieces and or uniform uh, panels. In this case, you want to fold it uh, 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 compact. It can be folded compactly. However, if you start to introduce thickness to this, it becomes slightly uh, problematic. The, the simple thing is because for the thick panel, you now for the zero thickness origami, you have a concept of vertices. In this case, a vertex is where three or uh, four creases meet. And so you can do lots of folding. However, if it becomes a thick panel, you can't have this uh, simply because, for instance, if we have a door, if we want to uh, uh, fix the door to a door frame, depending on which direction you want to open the door, you can't uh, ignore the thickness. If you want to open the door inwards, you have to put the hinges or fold the lines inside uh, or, or, or the inner surface of the door. If you want to open it outwards, you have to put it on the outer surface of the door. And so you can't simply uh, 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 co convert uh, uh, a zero thickness folding to a thick panel folding. For instance, here we have three mountains and one valley. You can't simply put the three mountains at the top surface of the panels and put the valley at the bottom surface of the panel. You will find it's not going to work. And so there are lots of ideas for uh, this work. I, I think uh, 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 Tomohiro's work uh, many years ago it started by using the taped panels and uh, all other works. So I kind of go through here uh, very quickly. So those are the concepts being produced before. And uh, actually, there is a, a, a very good paper by Rob the Land which reviews all these concepts. So the the, the review paper actually is, is this one. So you can find lots of different ideas. But today I'm, I'm going to focus on a, a, a simple idea, uh, which uh, uh, my collaborators, I started uh, quite a few years ago. So we decided simply, we want to put hinges at, uh, uh, for the thick panel model, we want to put hinges either at the bottom surface or at the top surface of the panel. So in this case, if we started with a, a full crease uh, folding, uh, uh, we need to convert this to a, a 4R loop. I.e., If we have rigid panels, we have four hinges. And so this is a, a closed kinematic chain. So uh, at the time we proposed, if you want to make this thing foldable, the, this particular uh, 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 closed loop must be a Bennett linkage and the uh, creases or the, the folds are revolute joints. And uh, so we came up with this idea. So we, we are able to fold it. For instance, this is uh, a case where we have zero thickness. So we can have a kinematic equivalent folding. You can see this model, I purpose made it out of very thick panel. So you can see it can be folded uh, compactly. And we extend this idea to other cases. For instance, if you have uh, 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 origami with vertices where six creases meet, we need to use something called the brick card linkage. We can still fold it compactly. 
And so it looks at, at the time we think we, we, we did some good job and, and we, we kind of solved the problem. However, it becomes a problematic because you can see here for this model and the, the thickness, uh, you, you end up with kind of steps. So this is a bit lower, this is a bit higher and so on. So once you open the surface, it has this sort of steps. Uh, at the time we thought it's not a big deal because if you are doing a solar panel, if you have steps, then that's it. However, the aerospace engineers, they are not terribly happy with this. And secondly, this thing does not fold compactly. If you fold it, it goes into this sort of shape. It has a, a void in the middle. The, obviously, you can design your solar panel so that you can uh, uh, make use of the void. You can put something in the middle. However, again, that's something uh, the, the uh, engineers, they are not happy. So we, we end up having two problems. One is the uneven surface. And even in some, type, uh, some cases, the thickness of each panel uh, must be different because of kinematic constraints. And secondly, we can't fold it compactly because the, uh, the mechanism motion determines the final folded shape. So in this case, we have a void in the middle. So in order to overcome this problem, we decided to use a Kirigami concept. So let me explain a little bit uh, uh, what this concept is. Basically, if we have uh, a, a simple case where uh, this is a, a zero thickness origami with two vertices. So each vertex has four creases meet at a point. So based on original idea, if we want to make this thing, uh, so, sorry, if it has zero thickness, obviously you, you can fold it subject to certain conditions about those angles. You can even fold it rather compactly. However, if we decided to cut a slit between AB, so instead of having a crease, now we cut a slit between AB. If this thing has zero thickness, there is no difference between the two. You can have a slit. You 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 can have uh, you 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 can uh, you can have a case with a slit. You can have a case without a slit. Their behaviors are exactly the same. However, if you start making it a thick panel, they become different. For instance, here is a case without a slit, and then if we want to use my method to fold it. Uh, you have to making sure around this vertex is a bandit linkage and around this vertex is another bandit linkage. So we have two four R closed kinematic chains because each bandit linkage is a four R closed chain. However, if you decide to cut a slit, so there is no joint between two yellow panels. In this case, you end up with a six R closed chain because we have six pieces, one, two, three, four, five, and the six. You have six pieces in the six R closed chain. So you have to use a different uh, mechanism for this case. Uh, uh, here, we used something called the uh, 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 Wardron, hybrid Wardron uh, six R linkage. So eventually we managed to fold this. You can see this is the example. And uh, uh, first of all, in this example, because of the particular angles we have picked and all panels have exactly the same thickness. And when you start folding it, you can see the slit here, which is invisible because when it's flat, the, the slit uh, closes. And, uh, and then you can see when you fold it, it opens up and eventually it goes into this shape. You can extend this idea further. Not only we have this simple case, we can have a, a complicated case, case where we have a mixture of many such units. In this case, we can still fold it to this case. So now we manage to find the solution where all the panels have the same thickness, but we still have yet to solve the problem where we have compact folding because once it folds up, it's like a crab. You have this hole in the middle. And therefore, uh, the, uh, this is a work done quite some time ago. And, and now I'm moving into a slightly 
more recent work about the compact folding of arrays with thick panels. So the, 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 the focus here is about the compact folding. So when I showed those ideas uh, to aerospace engineers, they said, look, so it's better to do uh, such a job. If I have a chessboard, this is my solar uh, array. And this array is made of rectangles, identical rectangles. They are not interested in other shapes, say identical rectangles. Uh, they want to fold it into two stacks. In this case, you can see there are two stacks here. Is that possible? If we want to do it, if you can do it, how? So this is the, the, the challenge I got uh, uh, quite a few years ago. So we want to do a rigid uh, uh, origami. We want to fold the scene into two stacks and there is no voids. So it's a compact folding without any uh, voids. And once it open, all those things will, will come together. There is no uh, gaps in between. Okay, so therefore, it is important, uh, when I got this question, it is important to see how we connect those panels together. And so let's start by considering this case, we have like 12 panels. So I give those panels names. So I have yet to decide how those panels are going to be connected. I just lay them out, uh, for example, on the floor, those panels. So let's consider this yellow panel called the P22. Okay, so it has four neighbors, one, two, three, four. So now, first of all, I want to connect this blue one, this blue neighbor P21 with this yellow one with a hinge. I can put this hinge on the top surface, for instance. Then once I fold it, this blue panel will go over to this yellow panel. Therefore, once it's folded, the top surface of the yellow panel is occupied by its neighbor, the blue neighbor. Okay, now I start to consider the next neighbor is the bottom one, which is called P32. And now when I, uh, then I connect them again by a, a, a hinge. Okay. Then if I want to fold it, this green one can no longer go to the top surface of this yellow one, because the top surface has already been occupied by the blue panel. Hence, the only possibility is to fold this green one to the bottom surface of the yellow panel. Okay, so therefore, this hinge has to be at the bottom surface. Once I done that, the yellow panel, the both the top surface and the bottom surface of the yellow panel has been taken by two neighbors. And therefore, I can no longer connect those two panels, those two neighbors, P12 and P23 with P22, because if you connect it, you can't fold over anymore because it, it, both the top surface and the bottom surface have been taken by its neighbors. And therefore I conclude only two panels can fold over or under uh, one panel. And therefore only two hinges are allowed on each panel. Uh, hence, if you want to design a folding, uh, 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 if you want to design connections for this array, we have to find a way so that each panel has only two neighbors. So this uh, brings us to something called the Hamiltonian circuit. Hamiltonian circuit is a bit like a game. If you start with one panel, you try to design a path which goes through each panel once and only once. For example, I start here, I go through this panel once in and out, in and out. So I go through each panel once and only once that it comes back all the way to this panel. Okay, so if I can design such a path, it is called Hamiltonian circuit. Then I only need to put my connections perpendicular to this path. So each uh, uh, panel has only two hinges because you this path goes in and out. And so you have a, a, a hinge when it goes in and the hinge when it comes out. So you end up with this sort of connection. Okay, therefore, when you want, if you want to design such a thing, you only need to work out the Hamiltonian circuit. 
it is possible to make a program to, to, to find the Hamiltonian circuit. However, the, the problem is NP hard if you have an uh, infinite number of panels. However, for our practical cases, we always have very limited number of panels. So it's not a big deal if you want to find all the Hamiltonian circuits. For instance, if we have a six by five array and this is all the Hamiltonian circuits, you can have. Okay, then what if you have the Hamiltonian circuit, for example, in this case, so we have a hinge here, a hinge here, and uh, sorry, if I use a laser pointer, and you have a hinge here and a hinge here, but you can't have a hinge there. So that's why I put a gap here. So I actually cut it open. So it's a Kirigami kind of a uh, pattern because it has lots of this kind of slits. However, once the solar panel is completely open, it, it doesn't matter because all those slits will close up. Okay, so this is the case. So you have uh, all those possibilities. Uh, then if you look at all those possibilities carefully, you will find a few interesting things. First of all, the this assembly has 30 rigid bodies. So it's connected by 30 revolute joints forming a closed kinematic chain. Hence the number of degrees freedom is pretty high. Is in this case, it at least 24. If you ignore the bifurcation saw, so, so you end up with 24 uh, in this case. And secondly, although we have lots of ways of folding, you can see this one, this one, this one, so many of them, not everyone can end up with two stack folding, okay? So let me sort out the second problem first. If we, uh, we know some of them can fold into two stacks and some of them cannot. So how can I know which one uh, we can, which one we can't? So the way to do that is kind of quite interesting. So first of all, you have to determine which two panels are going to be the top of the two stacks. For instance, here, I decided to put those two panels at the top. So let me turn this off. So I want to put those two panels at the top, okay? So I, I make an imaginary cut here. This is not a real cut. So I, I you, you can see those two panels are actually connected, but I make an imaginary cut at this place, okay? Then I fold this panel first along this route. So I fold this over, 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 over. So all the way till here. So I need to fold 14 times. So eventually I got here. And then I do the same. I fold this one all the way 14 times and I end up with here, this one, okay? So once I done that, eventually I end up with a stack like this. And when I make this imaginary cut, I, I draw a red line here, and I also draw a red line here. Once I finish, I'll find those two red lines. Actually, they, they are together. So this is the case where I can fold it into two stacks. Instead of using those two panels at the top, if I use those two panels at the top, those two here, sorry, here, those two at, at the top. So I do the same. I have an imaginary cut. I draw two red lines. So I fold this one all the way here. I fold this one all the way, uh, all the way here. And then I end up with this case. You will find those two red lines. They are on the either side of those two panels. So this is a case you can't fold it into uh, two stacks. Okay, to put this into a mathematical way, it's basically you need to make an imaginary cut, then you have those uh, uh, vectors, and then you start reflect those vectors using symmetry along the common uh, 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 creases. So if you reflect this one over, like you fold it over, so basically you, you, you can mirror this vector to this side. Then about this hinge, you do the mirror again. So you come all the way here. If eventually you, uh, sorry, you all the way you end up here and you do the same for this one called the E2 plus. So it comes all the way, you end up with this side. If those two, they match and that means you can fold it into two stacks. If they don't match, you can't fold them into two stacks. So this is the first thing you can do. And secondly, although it has, very high degrees of freedom. 
But if you look at those panels, in particular, the symmetric Hamiltonian circuits, you will find actually those two panels, you don't need to fold it over, although they are connected by a hinge. Because this, uh, uh, this particular uh, connection can become inactive. You can make it inactive. It won't cause any problem for your folding into two stacks. And similarly for this one, this is at the top, this is at the bottom. More importantly, even sometimes when those panels, there is no connection with a, with a slit in the middle, you will find that actually you can make this slit, uh, uh, you can weld this slit together without causing any problem. So if you do that, you can merge some panels. So those two panels are merged, those are merged, those are merged, those are merged, and those two. Hence, you reduce the overall number of the degrees of freedom. You can still fold it into two stacks. However, regardless of what you do, the number of degrees of freedom is pretty high in this case. And therefore, we decided to use some mechanical means to synchronize the motion, because if the number of degrees of freedom is high, you can either have lots of motors trying to control it, or you find some other way to synchronize the motion. So we decided to use spring hinges, like uh, tape hinges uh, people have used in for aerospace applications, or this kind of simple spring-loaded hinges. So here is an example how this thing uh, can be done. So. Let me show you this video. Yeah, so this is uh, connected by spring hinges. You can see those panels. So each panel has two connectors, this one and this one. For example, this panel has this one, this one. So there is a Hamiltonian circuit in, in, in this case. And you can uh, fold it together like a bundle Then you open it because of the stored elastic energy, it opens up rather quickly to this shape. Okay, and then we can also do some optimization to this problem because it is important to make sure during this rapid opening process, those panels, they don't hit each other because all the solar panels, they're made of uh, electronic circuit boards and so on. So if they start colliding with each other, it can be dangerous. So you can actually uh, uh, come up with uh, optimization function uh, to make sure the opening process, they don't hit each other. So what are the variables? The variables are actually the stiffness of the springs. So here you have lots of springs, so you can make sure, uh, uh, you, you can tune the stiffness of those springs to make sure uh, uh, they don't hit each other. So this is a work we done. So we started, for example, we have uh, a, a panel where you have lots of spring hinges. We may, uh, we started by having the 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 uh, stiffness of the spring being zero point one, and this is the unit. And you will find when you try to open it, they actually hit. Uh, the panel will hit uh, with others during the opening process. It starts from here to here to here. You can see this this one. Eventually, it goes back. It will hit the back. And now we decided to run an optimization to this. So we end up with a design for this uh, stiffness, spring stiffness. It's all shown here. So they are no longer 0 0.1. So you have 1, 2, 3, 0 0.1. Some others, it becomes a different value. Even we have some zero ones. And, and in this case, you don't have this collegiate anymore. So I'll show you a video when they collide and when they don't collide. So I cut the ribbon because they all fold it together by storing energy. And you can see this panel here, it goes over to the back and then hit that bit there. You can see they hit it and then carry on opening. So this is what we don't want. And therefore on this side, we have an optimized a uh, 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 spring stiffness, and uh, you can see it won't happen. The, the the this before it hits the other ones, you can see it has already opened, and, and then it just goes into its position at this place. So we have not put in any dampers in this case. It's only the springs. So this simple example shows this method works.
Okay, so now, uh, and then my collaborator, which is a small company, I think in seven owes me, some of you might go there to visit them. It's called also the space systems. So they got a little bit excited. So they 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 made a, a animation, basically. They tried to sell this idea to their clients. So they say, okay, the, you have a big solar panel, you can have them connected, and eventually it opens up like this. So I think th this is not a real thing. This is animation. I think they paid some money, got some animators, uh, and they produced this. So it looks pretty nice. So I, I'm showing you here. Okay, so now, uh, uh, once we get that done, then we started thinking of uh, uh, things to make this idea a little bit more general. For example, if I have solar panels made of regular polygons rather than uh, rectangles, can we also use Hamiltonian circuit concept? It turned out to be possible. For example, here we have a case where we have lots of triangular panels you can also get Hamiltonian circuit, you can fold it. Or you can have this kind of hexagonal, uh, uh, this is another case we have uh, 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 triangles. You can, you can do this, equilateral triangles. You can also do this. And uh, so the idea, the early, I, this is hexagonal ones. So the I, early idea, if you want to do two stacks, you make an imaginary cut, you do this kind of vector reflection, you can still do that to a certain extent. So I won't dive into details about that because we are still working on this. And uh, so you can see, you, you can fold it. This one, you can't fold into two stacks. This one, you can, and, and, and so on. It becomes quite interesting. And, uh, and then we decided, we want to use this idea to take a little bit further. Can we get something which is a single degree of freedom? And if you want to achieve single degree of freedom folding, because I said earlier, I have multiple degrees of freedoms and the, I have to use springs to synchronize the motion. But uh, 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 some people who know my, my work before, I always want to get to a single degree of freedom in most cases. Can I do that? So uh, we started by thinking, instead of using Hamiltonian circuit to make a very large array in one go, we want to use the Hamiltonian circuit concept for small units or small elements to start with. Then we assemble those elements together to form a large array. So we started by considering this case is a, a, a small element made of 10 triangles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten triangles. Okay. So the Hamiltonian circuit is very simple. It's just the closed loop here. And then uh, in this case, I should be able to fold it into uh, 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 two stacks. But then if I uh, examine it closely, I discover if I put those two at the top and those two at the bottom, Actually, the connection in between those two needs not to be activated. And therefore, I merge those two panels together to form a parallelogram panel, which is P4. I merge those two panels together to form another parallelogram panel, which is P8. So now I have two parallelogram panels, then I have three, uh, I have six uh, triangular panels. And the, the triangular panels is simply half of the parallelogram panel, okay? So in this case, I can make this a thick panel. You can see here, I can fold it into uh, two stacks like this. So this is my unit. And this unit has eight pieces. I have eight connections. So it's a closed kinematic chain. It's an 8R closed kinematic chain. In general, an 8R closed kinematic chain will have two degrees of freedom, okay? And then I now I try to use this element to build a unit. So how can I do that? So I started by having a single element like this. Okay. So I put this element here. Then I rotate this element. And uh, I actually, I do a flip. Then I do a rotation. So I end up with an element like this. You can see those two are quite similar. You have a... a, a a parallelogram here and here, B8 and B4. 
So it's 8, 4, and 8, 8. And now I have triangles. So I put it this way. Okay, so the slit here, I could A, slit here, I could B. Sorry, this element A, element B. Now I put them together by overlapping some element, uh, some panels. So you can see I put this over. When they overlap, the blue and the yellow will be, become green. So I have those overlap elements. Then I do the same again. I put this one at this corner. So I have this one. And I put this yellow one at this corner. So then I have this central piece, which is overlap of four panels. Okay. So I have, I end up with this. Although I have overlap, but I still make it the thickness is only one panel. So eventually I end up with assembly like this. You can see the Hamiltonian circuit, they kind of cross each other. Now, once I done that, then I can do a kinematic kind of a simple uh, uh, analysis, see what's going to happen. So basically, I have this assembly, this unit is the assembly of four 8R elements. I have 8RA, which is this one, 8RB, which is this one, 8RC here, 8RD here. So for each of this element, it has two degrees of freedom. Hence, I need two input to, to, to drive it. So let me start with 8RD. So assuming those two dihedral angles are inputs. So it, if I give it two inputs, this one is going to, uh, I can define the configuration of this one. And then this one has two outputs, which become inputs for this one. So this, the configuration of this one is determined. And this one, again, give two outputs as inputs for this one, and this configuration is determined. And this one has two outputs, which becomes inputs for this one. So this configuration is determined. However, this is a closed connection. So this one will generate two outputs, which will become input for this one, which is redundant. And this redundancy uh, uh, make it possible uh, so that the entire assembly has only one degree of freedom, okay? So we did some derivation and I'm not going to show you the derivation, it's pretty boring mathematical work, but I'm showing you that this element, you can see it is a single degree of freedom. So you can see it opens in one go. So it has only one degree of freedom, okay? So we purposely using those triangles of funny shape uh, and it, it, it has th this kind of feature. And uh, so we can also do a second element. The second element is a bit tricky. So we have this uh, second unit, sorry. We use the same element. So this is element A, this is element F. So F and A, are almost identical, but, but there is a flipping here. You can see A8 is at the bottom, F8 is at the top. And then we connect them together. Uh, again, we have overlaps. So we have A here, F here. So we have, then we add another F identical called H here and the G here. So once you have this connection, again, you, you end up with something like this. But instead of having two going through to the neighbor, you have only one. Go, goes on and you have three and the three. But it turned out this one also has a single degree of freedom. We still couldn't figure out graphically why it has one, but, but mathematically we managed to prove it has one degree of freedom. And again, this is a model we create. So you can see this one has a single degree of freedom. It opens up like this, okay? So all those panels have uniform thickness. Okay, so there are gaps in those uh, panel, uh, panels uh, and uh, some are connected, but there are some slits in it. And once we have those two units and we can work out how many degrees of freedom it has. And uh, uh, from the beginning to the end, even at the very beginning, and you might expect that there will be uh, kinematic bifurcations, but actually those bifurcations only appear 
if panels can penetrate each other, and if you uh, uh, if physically they can't penetrate each other, it has a single degree of freedom. It goes from here to here. Sorry, this is open the position. This is closed position. Like this. This is unit one. This is unit two. They they have all single degrees of freedom. So we published a paper in Royal Pro, uh, Society Proceedings on this. And now you can tessellate those units. Once you have a unit, you can have unit one, unit two. Again, you use overlap. You create a bigger one. And so you can have a, a combination of two unit ones, or you can have a, a combination of unit twos. You can see this model, you can fold it up. Or you can have the uh, you can have unit one plus unit two. You can put them to, sorry unit two plus unit one. You can put them together. You can create this kind of thing. So there are lots of ways of mixing them together to have a single degree of freedom, and they all have a very compact folding. But in this case, obviously, it's no longer two stacks because we have all this. So you, you end up with with many more stacks. And this is an, another co uh, combination. And when you combine them together, if you decided the overall size is too big, you can get rid of some, some panels. And uh, for example, here, we only take those enveloped by this uh, a green uh, a dash dot line. So you end up with something like this. And again, you can fold and unfold this. Okay, it has a single degree of freedom. And so I finish my talk here. I think I take up lots of your time. And so basically, we managed to use the origami-based approach uh, uh, to achieve bidirectional folding. So we started by having uh, a variable thickness and non-compact folding, but then we managed to show it is possible to have compact folding. And uh, when I talk about the single degree of freedom, in the end, it's all vigorously proven uh, using kinematic theory, but I have not shown you here. And uh, the Hamiltonian circuit, actually, we discover if you can use it to design the overall array in one go, but actually, it is more useful if you use it to design modules, and then you combine them together. So this is another uh, uh, approach we did and uh, so this is uh, 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 this is not a kirigami one. This is the origami one where you have all those panels together and then you can fold it into. Uh, it looks as if it's one stack, but actually it's two stacks because those two uh, squares are a combination of two triangles. So you can fold it. So again, you can you can use this sort of element, and and then you create. You combine those elements, you can end up with very large uh, uh, arrays with a single degree of freedom. And again, they have uh, uh, compact folding, and the thickness uh, of each panel is identical. Okay. And uh, in addition to this thing, uh, I introduce you here. I also want to show you some of the work we are doing uh, um, recently. And this is a kind of we call the multi-stable surfaces, and which you can uh, again, it's a bit like a kirigami thing with lots of slits. You 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 can have this thing, uh, and we can also have a bistable, multi-stable frame, which again uh, 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 we took out of uh, 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 origami folding boxes, so you can uh, create this kind of uh, structure. And uh, using thick origami, we we created a gripper which you can grab things. And we designed for grab a symmetric stuff, but it turned out if it's non-symmetric, you can also grab it. And uh, uh, we did some work on foldable cellular structures where again, we use thick panel idea. You can have those uh, 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 things uh, like little cells, you can fold it to flat shape. So that's all of my talk. And thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much.